What's the latest update regarding the One Health Pass registration? From two steps, it now became one step. What is this all about? Let us find out. Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Jamie Iris and I'm welcoming you to my channel named Jamie Iris Talk TV where I bring you current information and guidelines when it comes to traveling and uh, other information that definitely will help you when it comes to flying to the Philippines. Uh, for today, let me just share to you the update regarding the One Health Pass or what we call the OHP. So for foreigners who are watching and you want to know, what is this One Health Pass? Because I'm about to go back to the Philippines and you are allowed to travel to this country. So what are the things that you have to take into consideration in completing the One Health Pass? First, let's discuss what is One, what is one Health Pass. So what's the purpose of One Health Pass? Now, instead of completing a lot of online registration forms, so what was decided was for them to just have one form, which is the One Health Pass, which will capture your information and submit and distribute it to the agencies, whether it's government or private, that needs your information so that they can process your information relevant to your arrival or at the same time, use this for contact tracing. So actually, it's more convenient. Uh, the last time I traveled back to the Philippines was last year, and there were so many forms that we have to complete. But at this time, at least uh, that's the only form that we have to complete. And the other one is just the electronic case investigation form. So in uh, this situation, if you're a non-OFW, on since you're a foreigner, you simply have to complete this form. And then what else? Who? Who needs to complete this? As a foreigner, you have to complete this form because, again, just like what I've said, you have to definitely uh, give the information to these uh, agencies. Now, other Filipinos, non-OFWs or OFWs, they definitely have to complete this. Uh, for Balikbayan, so if you do not have any dual citizenship anymore, so you also have to complete this uh, simply because, again, it's required for everyone who's arriving in the Philippines, whether you are arriving from the airport or the seaport. Now, when? When should you uh, complete this? You should complete this at least 24 hours before your flight. Please take note again, 24 hours, because there's a possibility that it will expire if you complete it more than 24 hours. Uh, this is the latest update. Uh, last month when I traveled, we actually completed it more than 24 hours and it was quite okay. However, Recently, maybe because of the change, there were some travelers who's, um, who actually completed this for more than 24 hours. So when they reach uh, the certain airport that they have to travel from, so they were asked to actually uh, complete it all over again. Or when they arrived, because the information was not uh, fresh anymore, so they were asked to actually complete it. How they determine the expiry that uh, we that was not specified, but again, the advice is at least complete it 24 hours before your flight. So let's take a look. How shall you be completing this? So all you have to simply do is go to this website, either type one health pass from the internet engine, or just go to www.onehealthpass.com.ph. And once you reach this page, you, you can actually read the warning. So you may read the English version. So again, they're just simply reminding you to make sure that the information that you will enter will always be accurate and correct. Now, from all these tabs that you can see, uh, you have, have to simply click the yellow tab, which is the EHDC. And then once again, same reminder, make sure that it's accurate and correct. Click OK. Have you already registered with One Health Pass? Answer, uh, the answer is no. 
and click OK once again, and you will be prompted to this page. Once you're in this page, you simply have to complete the following information. Again, please just treat this important note. Uh, it just simply says to you that please note that any and all information inputted in and submitted via this form will be reflected on your certificate from the Bureau of Quarantine. So meaning uh, this is the certificate that you will need uh, to certify that you are free from COVID, uh, the COVID virus and what you need once you exit or check out from the quarantine hotel. Any incorrect information may lead to delays in your release from the quarantine. And all those that have read asterisk, you simply have to complete it. So the first part will be your personal profile. So just make sure you complete your last name, first name, middle name, and your suffix. And then make sure that you choose from the drop down menu from this calendar that your birth date. And then after that, of course, your gender, your civil status, and then your nationality. Since you're a foreigner, you definitely won't have any field health numbers. Type NA are not applicable. Then your passport number, complete the information, and then please make sure that you type down your Philippine number. What if you don't have any Philippine number at this point in time? And this local Philippine number. Now, if you have a Philippine number, please type it down. If you don't have any Philippine number, then if you know anyone from the Philippines, just simply ask them if they can uh, be your reference. So as they re ask your reference, I uh, ask them if you could ask for their telephone number and it can be uh, used for the OHP as reference and any text messages from the OHP uh, to their mobile phone, ask them to inform you about it. And then email address. So your email address, make sure that you know the password and it is updated. And then for the name of next kin, so kindly just write it down, your relationship to your next kin, the contact number, as well as the address of your next kin. Then we're done. <laughs> and you simply have to complete the residence details. Now, this is much more simplified than what we have last month. Last month, you still have to complete the current address and the permanent address. Now, you simply have to complete what will be your address after you actually have completed your quarantine period. So enter the house, a lot or building number, the street subdivision, uh, details, the region, what part of the Philippines um, will you be staying, and then the province, the municipality, and the barangay. So example, you'll be staying in Calabar Zone or Region 4A. So automatically, the rest of the boxes uh, auto-populates and at the same time, just narrows down what are the information in that province. So all of these are in Calabar Zone. So let us just say you will be choosing Cavite. And then what municipality will it be? Now, all of these municipalities are located in Cavite, let us just say you'll be choosing Tagaytay. So from Tagaytay, which one? So you just simply have to ask. So if it's a hotel, so just make sure that at least you know it from the address as well. If not, just send the hotel reception or what we call the hotel guest services and information or ask them for the information. What exact place will it be? Let's take a look. Travel details. So will you be arriving in the airport? Or will you be arriving from the seaport? So most of the passengers will arrive from the airport. So for this example, I'll be using airport. So are you an aircraft passenger or are you a flight crew? So let us choose aircraft passenger. Now uh, here for the travel itinerary, uh, one thing that we have to take into consideration is how many flights did you have? Did you have a layover flight? So what they are looking for for this uh, travel itinerary is your last flight before traveling to the Philippines. So, for example, your airport of origin is from the United Kingdom, but your layover is in Qatar. So you will have to use Qatar or you have to actually indicate Qatar because that's your last flight going to the Philippines. So let us take a look. Qatar and then uh, city will be Doha. Airport that you will be arriving to is Clark, let us just say, for example. And then what was the airline name? 
So if it's Qatar, then it's Qatar Airways. And then what the one thing that I really like as well is they actually simplified it for us or for you traveling simply because they have actually indicated what are the flights coming from Qatar. So in my situation, for example, or yours, SQR930 or QR931. Now, flight number, you don't need to because they did specify it already. Date of departure. So let us just say 24th. And then arrival in the Philippines could also be like, for example, 25 midnight, right? And then if you have your seat number and you did check in online, then you can write it down. But if you don't, do not worry. It does not have any asterisk. And then let's take a look. Uh, what type of traveler are you? So, of course, for you, it will be foreign national. So you just have to, again, choose the category. Let us say, for example, you're an airline crew, then uh, please choose this. If you're a seafarer or anyone availing the green lane privilege, so you can simply choose this. If you're a foreign diplomat, choose accordingly so again these are the options so even those who are spouse of filipino citizen so you could actually uh, choose spouse let us just say so it will ask you actually for the quarantine hotel you booked and again since this is uh, we will be arriving in clark uh, as we use for an example since the example that we use is we are arriving at the Clark International Airport. So let us just say Xenia Hotel. That's where I stayed. <laughs> and then Xenia Hotel. So after that, you're, you've completed your type of traveler information. The next information they will ask from you is your vaccine information. So have you been vaccinated for COVID-19? If your answer is yes, click yes. Uh, your first dose? So give all the details. Let us just say, for example, uh, you were vaccinated last June uh, 10, and then the vaccine is a Pfizer. Uh, you don't need to complete the batch or, or first dose because it doesn't have any asterisk at all. So same thing with the region of health facility and vaccination of center facility and remarks. They all don't have any asterisk, so you don't have to actually complete it if you don't have the information. And country where you were you vaccinated from so again uh, let us just say united kingdom and then uh, again did the first dose or the first job that you've had did you have any first uh, dose adverse effects if you did please click yes if no then click no second dose are uh, same so you simply have to click yes, and it will ask you for information. So let us just say August, August 4, and the name of vaccine, it's still Pfizer. And then just make sure that you indicate the country where you were vaccinated. And again, this four, you don't have to complete it anymore. Second, those adverse events, if, if you have any, please click yes. If not, click no. And since you completed your two vaccines, so just make sure that you upload your vaccine card or vaccine certificate. Uh, last month, they didn't require for, uh, for this, but now they're requiring this. Now, maybe some of you, uh, you're not yet fully vaccinated or you have not been vaccinated at all. So can you still uh, come to the Philippines? Oh, definitely, yes. You can still fly to the Philippines as long as you are a foreigner or non-OFW who actually, um, what we call, are allowed uh, to fly to the Philippines. Because as we know now, tourists are still not allowed to fly to the Philippines. We hope very soon that uh, most tourists will be, if not all tourists, will be allowed to the Philippines, especially if a lot of people are already vaccinated. Okay, cool. But as of now, only limited people who are allowed to travel to the Philippines, this actually applies. Now, COVID-19 uh, RT-PCR test results. So, uh, recently, uh, there was a unupdated uh, travel restriction uh, rule that uh, were... Recently, there was a travel... 
Okay, let's take a look. So COVID-19 RT-PCR test result. Now, this is very important, especially from anyone or foreigners coming from the green countries because of the recent uh, protocol that was announced a few weeks ago that if you're coming from the green countries and you are already fully vaccinated, so all you simply have to do is present an RT-PCR test taken at least 72 hours before your arrival in the Philippines. So if your answer is yes and you do have what we call the RT-PCR test, so simply just click yes. But if your answer is no, please click no. Now, countries travel too. So again, depends on the number of countries that you've traveled in the last 30 days. So please make sure that you indicate or choose this from the drop-down menu. Now, what else? Exposure histories. So again, if you've been exposed to COVID-19 in the last 14 days, please indicate yes or no. And have you been in a place with a known COVID-19 transmission 14 days before the onset of signs and symptoms? So if you notice in from yourself that you're you know, feeling the signs and, and symptoms, then click yes. If not, then click no. Clinical information. So what are you feeling during that time that you actually are completing the form? So have you been sick in the past 30 days? So please answer this by choosing the right the box that is appropriate. And then if any of the options are not actually applicable, so you can simply write uh, on the other comorbidities box so that you can specify the information. And we're almost done, right? So data privacy and affidavit of undertaking. So please just make sure that you read this. So once you read this and you hereby attest that all the information stated in the application are true and correct based from your personal knowledge and that you're fully aware that you can be subjected to disciplinary action just in case any misrepresentation of this on your part, then click this. And once you're done, make sure that you enter the CAPTCHA details and you can simply click submit. And once you click submit everyone, it will now prompt you to a page wherein you will be given a QR code. And once you have your QR code, please take a screenshot of this and an email also of a copy of the QR code and the confirmation of your registration will be sent to your email. And from that, everyone, I hope this video had helped you in completing the one half pass that you require in flying to the Philippines. So once again, everyone, uh, these are the things that you have to take into consideration. So when do you have to complete this? You have to complete this at least 24 hours before your flight. And what do you need to actually aim to get out of this online registration? It is actually the one half pass QR code. Uh, when and where do you need to present this? You will have to present this at the airport of departure and at the airport of arrival. So they will definitely ask this from you. And other than that, so those are the basic information that you have to know. And again, whether you're an OFW, non OFW, a foreigner, as long as you're arriving here in the Philippines, you're required to complete this. Whether you will be arriving in the airport or in the seaport, you still have to complete this. So once again, everyone, as you fly back to the Philippines and prepare to fly back to the Philippines, all I can simply say is stay happy and have a pleasant flight, everyone. Should you have some questions about the completion of the one half pass, please do not hesitate. Write down on the comment box below so that at least I could help you out. So once again, everyone, this is Jamie Iris. Simply saying thank you for watching Jamie Iris Talk TV. Until our next video. If this video had helped you, please click like and I'm inviting you to please subscribe to my channel. This is Jamie Iris Talk TV. Until our next video, God bless you everyone.